My name is Tom. I have a travel story. And Finland is involved. The fanciful nature of my story is I got home to my home in Connecticut from Finland on three beams of light. It took three beams of light for me to to work out the logistics of uh, moving uh, about eight amps, nine guitars, uh, seven, sold two, uh, a household of all my all my belongings to sell a car that was not going to make uh, a final international another international trip. It had been in f uh, three countries, and so I had to get rid of a car. I had to <laughs> move all my stuff to uh, back back home to Connecticut. And I had to get a flight. A one, I was always told a one-way ticket is hard, hard to get, um, sometimes more expensive. So I literally uh, could not muscle mind it. I, that was the term I was going to use. I had been, I've had, it, it, would, it was my fifth international move. I had been with a pro, uh, a diplomat, who had arranged these things and orchestrated them and also had the government pay for them. So it was uh, not as uh, difficult. It didn't have the component of figuring out for yourself and paying for it. Um, but I had some experience with the four moves, uh, enough to realize that I didn't have the wherewithal to muscle mine through it. So I imagined three beams of light. One, selling the bimmer. Two, getting my guitars and amps, my, my household home. And three, getting that flight. In an order of importance, they all had to happen. But I imagine just as beams of light coming down and braiding, literally intertwining, coming down in my head, and then some magic happening. I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. I wasn't doing. <clears throat> I wasn't going to muscle mind it. So uh, this was May of 2015 when the decision was made. June, uh, it started. Uh, the light started. Um, it turned out that September was going to be the time to move. For whatever reason, uh, it just fell together like that. Coincidentally, I was uh, imagining that my uh, application for um, for residence, uh, a permanent residence permit, uh, was at the time, but I knew I wasn't going to be living there permanently. It was time to come home to the hacienda, to the family house for a bit, so that was cut and dry. But it was nice to, to think of uh, the uh, residence permit. It did come and it gave me a uh, uh, lifetime residency uh, two weeks before I moved. I found out that I could stay there forever if I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and collect on the, t on the wonderfully horrendous socialist uh, benefits. The safety net there is amazing. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the, the time spent uh, from June to September was a mix of imagining the three beams of light, paralyzing fear, and three, three, three moves that uh, <clears throat> paralyzing fear and just moves that happen by themselves. The, the explanation for of that is, uh, let's say, the first, the first beam of light. I decided on a Monday evening to check. For in June to check for a flight. A one-way trip against all that uh, one-ways are so hard to get. I managed to get one within two hours and of course as we've, we've heard earlier tonight the prices change as they know you're searching. Search engine knows that much about who's, uh, who's doing what. So I realized within this two hours I have probably got a 310 euros the best flight that I'm ever going to get internationally. So I jumped on it. <clears throat> in between uh, panic, uh, frozen in panic, there were inspired moves. That was the other thing I was looking for. So the, the other term, the uh, online within two hours, the flight was settled. Uh, I decided to be uh, cheap and take a layover for that, uh, a 10 hour layover for the, uh, for the cheap flight. I could have spent a little bit more and not spent 10 hours in London, but I had never been in London before outside of Heathrow, so I thought I was going to spend some time walking. Of course, you know how that is on the layover. You get 
10 hours, <laughs> one and a half hours was spent doing that. And it was still, it was okay. But that was beam of light number one. Beam of light number two, how am I going to get my, my belongings home? I put out four requests, five requests, to the moving companies of the, in the area. In the area, of course, these are international companies. Within, uh, within Finland, though, I had a choice of at least five, and no one got back to me. Save for one, which uh, was in the interim, I was speaking with a friend, uh, an Australian who's been living in Finland for a couple of decades. And he happened to mention that he uh, had worked on a website for a moving company, a very small one, uh, but he thought the guy was conscientious. And it, as it turned out, that was the only one that had responded, the, uh, one out of five, uh, to my inquiry. So I had a good feeling, at least, about the connection. So I went, went with that. From that point on, it was a machine that went by of its own accord. Beam of light, did your thing. <laughs> Still trusting, because this is all just arrangements until the day of, or the weeks of, um, the car. The car was a very nice 316i. The BMW doesn't sell cars with engines that small in the States, but uh, we got it in Finland, moved to Germany, broke it in on the Autobahn, brought it to Washington, brought it back to Finland. It was not going to come back with me. It was staying in Finland this time. But how to get a Finn to buy a car with the yellow engine light, which in hmm. Finland means bring to the dealer and pay the 2,000 euros, <laughs> um, when a Finn will not go against the red light on the street. They are very observant of when they're told what what to do and what is important. I did manage to find a buyer, obviously, uh, but uh, too, too soon. Let me, uh, I was still dr dealing with that beam of light. I was cleaning the car uh, weekends uh, here. I was taking one end at a time, <coughs> the front okay. engine compartment. I just lost myself in detailing it. The interior, another day. The trunk on another. On the final day, a weekend, that I was uh, getting ready to clean it up to take pictures, to put it on the net, the call came in an hour before I went to take pictures. I had a buyer for the car already. Someone I knew, um, I, a, a, a working colleague, but and that, that conversation had been going on for a couple of weeks, but all of a sudden he needed a car, wanted it then, and he made the call this just an hour before I was uh, getting the car washed to go take pictures. So on that third beam of light, it happened, and all in due time. That was in September, within uh, within about two weeks of my leaving. So I had use of the car up until it was time to sell it, and uh, everything else moved on its own accord. Starting from May, uh, June to September, three beams of light got what got me to where my my muscles are without, could have never, never done. Thank you, Light. <laughs> and thank you for your patience. Anybody have ex expanding questions like um, what happens when the lights turn off? Or <laughs> an application for being a Finnish resident kind of expires? Or is it still something that I have can a car. be? Cons you have a card that says eligible to be a Finn man? <laughs> the card says you must spend six months or more in Finland each year. So on, in, in 2016, I violated that. Mm -hmm. So I... No I'm longer. No longer. Uh, I'm not persona non grata because I got back in uh, a, a month and a half ago. Oh. Okay. With another storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, That's Finland is, uh, is, is the topic tonight. <laughs> Any questions about Finland? <laughs> it's a lovely place, place to visit, and grass-fed dairy is, is mm. prevalent. Denmark, for example, they're known to be the happiest country in the world. Where does Finland rate right with that? They've been superseded this year, uh, 2018 possibly, by Finland. Really? <coughs> Finland, or maybe they've got a new metric, but the uh, all over the Facebook internet memes and internet memes is 
Finland is rated the happiest country. Hmm. However, as I, when I lived there first in 2002 to 03, they also had a distinction of having the highest or one of the highest rates of suicides. Hmm. Also, they were the, the least uh, corrupted country by by whatever standard decided mm -hmm. uh, to. Finland had an interesting combination of high smoking rates, mm -hmm. high gun suicides, drinking, but I a lot of drinking. Um, drinking is involved in the culture very heavily. I know also known teetotaling families as well mm -hmm. uh, in Finland, but you know, three o'clock on a Finnish, uh, on any given weekend on a Finnish mm -hmm. night is a, in town is quite a Quite a noisy thing. Like in the winter, how short are the days? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, well, they're, like they're about 66 uh, mm -hmm. in latitude. Oh, okay. They're kind of like Minnesota and above. So take that for temperature. And uh, I traveled, uh, I did work in theater uh, for, and did some road work, so I traveled within the Arctic Circle. And within 35 kilometers of Russia, actually. Within, within the Arctic Circle, yes, you can have uh, a 24-hour day in summer. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy camping in, uh, in, in the summertime, but not in Finland because it's just all night. Uh, it's all day. Mm -hmm. all night long. Well, that's it. In terms of in disrupting your cycle, you know, your sleep cycle, and everything, that has to play a number on your Seasonal affective disorder is uh, a big area of uh, research there. So maybe your beams of light have to do with being exposed mm. to 24-hour days <laughs> for so long? I, I'll take credit for the focusing and the repurposing of that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you could, you could be at 1 o'clock in the morning and, it, okay, it's starting to get light again. What do you mean, starting to get light? It sounds like it's been it's light. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll get a, you'll get a twilight. Uh, oh, it's yeah. not um, very far up. Of course, the sun never will go around the horizon. We'll never dip below it. Okay. But uh, at other places, the sun dips below the horizon for a couple of degrees and comes back up. Well, oh. So it's twilight for your, you get a little twilight. Ooh. Translate that to the, to the winter times, you'll get six hours maybe of sun and a lot mm -hmm. of twilight. Societally, do people follow why they the were shooting patterns, themselves. <laughs> well, they shoot themselves. They, the, I was told by my uh, amp guru, I, I have a technical mentor there, um, that it would be in the springtime when they would uh, somehow come mm -hmm. over uh, the early spring. It wouldn't be during the darkest of winter. Yeah. Somehow the, uh, the, the timing of it was greater uh, the, around March or so. Uh, hmm. I can see that. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Okay. Well, welcome back to the States. Thank Tommy. you very much. <laughs> I appreciate the, the diurnal <laughs> periods. Okay. Correct, uh, correct right. proportion.